Okay, the KLR is back together. Now we can play with the XR a little bit. It may rain all weekend, but there's a there's a little bike meet up at Kansas City I may want to go to, so I'd like to get this done. I'd like to fix this oil leak down in there in that head gasket. So, first thing, go down in there and pull the negative battery cable so I don't short anything out. Then we'll take the exhaust off, which should come off pretty easy because I had it off last weekend. Cleaning it up, giving it a paint job, fixing, fixing some bad uh, head studs, so the exhaust studs. So it should come off pretty easy. The exhaust wasn't terrible to get out of there. Certainly easier than the first time, where I had crap twisting off and everything else. There you can see the ground lug tucked up in there to where it can't touch anything metal. Next we'll take off the uh, tank cover. It is the top bottom and the two sides that you have to take out to lift this off. The other four are into the cover and will come off, the ring will come off with the cover. But, which seems to be a recurring theme with this bike, and I had to drill the head off of it just to get it out of there. So hopefully, there's enough left that I can get a hold of that and unscrew it. I've still got to find some new fasteners. This is irritating. Now they did unscrew by hand, so no harm done except a, a ruined fastener. But I think I'm going to quit for tonight before I end up having to destroy anything else. Well, I said I was going to quit for the night, but I lied. I went ahead and pulled the air box out. There's two, uh, two bolts running in on the side here. Take those out. Taking the tank completely off is not necessary. You take this bolt out here. There's a nut on the other side. There's a bolt that goes down in here. And you can just tilt the gas tank enough to pull the air box out. Pretty dang easy. One thing we did do when we had this apart before, put a K&N air filter in it, but these hoses here that come off your cylinder head, one in the front, one in the rear, they originally had a couple of real crappy little hoses that just pretty much fell apart and they went up to these two spots there and there and that spewed your crankcase vent stuff into your air box and on the Buells did the same kind of thing we always took those off we run the line down to the ground and just vented the atmosphere you don't really want that crap blowing up in your air box and the fact that those hoses were just junk so we just put some regular hose on it and run them down to the ground like any other vent line and that eliminates that problem so next i take these bolts out take this off two bolts here and back there one there we'll get that out of the way because we've got to disconnect the intake manifold from the head well, I kind of wondered exactly what that cover was hiding. I could feel something behind there, but I wasn't sure. Yeah, it just was a fancy cover for the uh, map sensor. Got your throttle position sensor over in here. Got a map sensor there. So now we are down to taking the two oil lines loose. Should be just able to flip them back out of the way. You've got two bolts here to loosen to uh, take out the intake manifold. Take those out. The back side, they're notched, so you should be able to loosen those and then pull that out and hopefully just slide it out of the way without too much trouble. Then we're down to, uh, assume that's a cylinder head temperature sensor wire. So that wire, the hose, and the spark plug wire, and then we can actually Start working our way down the head. I am going to quit for tonight. It's getting a little late. Got to work tomorrow and a beer is calling my name. 
It's a new day and we're back at it in the shop. Of course, the uh, shop dogs are on patrol. Got the new little puppy Leo over there. There's Oliver. And Barry's the one that just took off. Hey, Leo, quit eating the broom. Leo! Yeah, you, quit eating the broom. I decided to go ahead and since we got to pull the throttle body intake manifold, whatever you want to call it, I decided to go ahead and take the tank off. So I popped the two uh, fuel injector lines there. And then the fuel line is super easy. This part right here lifts up to release it and then the uh, fuel fitting pops out the bottom it's evidently got a check valve in it because it didn't go to puke and fuel so that is just almost too easy and then on this side you have the bolts that hold the intake manifold you loosen them take them out on the other side and it pulls out so oh and your fuel injector wires are already marked front and rear so I'm trying to make it simple on you I do need to find out if I have a socket for those head bolts. So. I know my daughter said she did if I didn't have anything that would fit it. So we'll go to the other side, take some more wiring loose, and just be ready to pull the tank off. And that wire right there that tucks in along the side, that goes to your fuel pump and your level sensor. So undo that. I assume that's a ground wire on the top and the vent. Take the bolts back out. Should be able to lift the tank off, get it completely out of the way. We ran into just a little bit of difficulty on this side. The one oil line that was up there, it's a flare style fitting. It unscrewed from the head just fine. The side that we got to take off, you can see down in there, the fitting that screws into the head is turning and it can't get the flare fitting to break free. So, down below, pull this off. This holds all this junction together. There's O-rings down in here that seal this so I was able to pivot this this way, slide the oil line like this, and was able to pull it up out of there. So, not a big issue when I pull the head. Then, ooh, wait a minute. And we'll see if I can get the intake out of there with this still in the way. That may be an issue. If I can get the intake out, get the head off, then we can get a wrench in there, tighten that up, and get this apart. But let me fiddle with it and see what I can do. All right, that fitting, that oil line being there was a bit of an issue. Because you can see now that this is unbolted, it needs to slide out where these are. So we really need to take the fittings out of the head to get the intake off. But since I have this disconnected from the bottom, I was able to turn the whole hose and was able to tighten the fitting that goes into the head. Then I took a wrench, put it on the flare fitting, whacked it with a mallet, and broke it free. So now that oil line can come off. The fitting can both come out of the head real easy and then the intake slides out. I've left the throttle cables on. I'm hoping I can just pull it this way, stick it back through and hang it on the other side. That's all there was to it. Took a three quarter inch socket, pulled both of those oil fittings out and that manifold just slides right out. And stick it up here. It's safe and out of the way. So we can get to the head. Have I mentioned how much I like this bike? I don't know that I've mentioned that in this video yet. Because on a Buell, to take this intake manifold out, you got to rotate the engine. Well, no, you may be able to do it without rotating the engine. But it is an absolute pain in the ass. Because you can't get to anything. I'm thinking that's the problem. If you don't rotate the engine, you can't get to anything. But I've got a little stubby wrenches that I built. And it was just a real test of Prozac to be able to get that out and then they're prone to leaking so one thing i forgot is you have the oil feed up top here and the return 
is on the bottom of the cylinder. That's something the Buells don't have is this separate oil circuit to the head. So I need to take this line off and then just a hose there and a temperature sensor and we can start actually removing the head. The rear oil line wasn't too much of a problem. Oh, it's a little bright there. But it's that standard style oil fitting they use. It uses one of these little clips like this. So you pop that out and down in there the back of that hose is mounted to like a T onto this other hose going back to the tank. So what I did was they don't give you much hose to work with, so I took and put block of wood up against the cylinder so I didn't damage anything, then put a screwdriver in between and pushed right there on that crimp and was able to slide it back, kind of push, push the hose to the side and you can pop that right out of there and then just tuck it down out of the way. We'll clean up this fitting in here, possibly put a new O-ring in it while we're at it. But now, we are ready to start actually physically taking the head off. That's all right, I didn't want you to stay up there anyway. Oh, wait, hey, hey. There we go. Now it's out of the way. Dang it. Okay. Four bolts on the cam cover or not the cam cover this is not an overhead cam it's an antique the rocker cover and then the uh wire going down to the temperature sensor just uh unclips back in there so you just take the cover off set the wire out through the middle okay that was just as easy as taking out those four bolts Take everything out a little bit at a time when you're loosening them so nothing warps. If you've watched my video on taking the rocker cover off the Buell, you know, I was pointing out that this gasket on the Buell gets so hot it shrinks or whatever to where it's not sticking up to seal anymore. Yeah, this one's still just fine. It wasn't leaking and it's still sticking up above the surface. So... Doesn't get near as hot back here as what it does on a Buell, but it's not stuck up in a frame either. And I'm really not missing hearing my gasoline boil when I come to a stop either. Next up, taking all the bolts out in there. Once again, taking everything out a couple small, like quarter turn at a time until you get them all loose. And that will take off this uh, rocker box. Oh, first thing, looks like that exhaust valve is down so I'm going to jack this up and turn the motor to where they're both valves are shut make it easier taking it off and putting it back together when you take this apart you want to do it in a certain order we're here on the left side of the bike there's an allen screw allen head screw here and here you take those two out first and on the other side, you have a bolt here, down there, and back there. Those are like 7 16 heads. You take those three out, and that leaves the four main bolts on the ends of the rockers. You want to take them out in a crisscross pattern, loosen them like a quarter turn at a time until you get them loose and you can unthread them. And then you should be able to lift the whole rocker box out as a unit. All right, I popped it loose gently with a screwdriver and that lets you lift that right out there. There's that temperature wire. Did I mention I like these bikes? I think I did. I'm not lying, I do, I like it. All right, your push rods. Oh, that's a big old long push rod. I'm just dribbling oil everywhere. 
pull those out and make sure you keep them to where they go back in the right spot and next up I'm gonna go looking for a socket for those head bolts okay we're ready to unbolt the cylinder head and there is a pattern that the uh, shop manual says to use and it's backwards flip-flopped front to rear cylinder so on the rear cylinder you want to start with this one first second then third and fourth and what you want to do is unscrew them an eighth of a turn at a time working through that pattern until they all get loose and then you can pull them out and then go ahead and remove the head now, i thought those bolts might be something special they're just a half inch 12 point so got a half inch 12 point breaker bar i'll start taking them off Tight. A little bit. But there's just those four bolts hold all that together. So is the head after all. Piece of cake. And the head is off. Two big old valves. Well, the base gasket wasn't leaking, but since we took the pressure off everything and the cylinder was moving around, we went ahead and pulled the cylinder off and we'll drop a new base gasket in there when we put it back together. Piston looks good. Rings are all free. A little bit of crap on top of the piston, but nothing terrible. Cylinder looks good. Everything looks great. Just had a bit of an oil leak. It's just a matter of putting her back together. But this is, this is fun. I actually uh, am enjoying working on this. Um, I think I'll end this video here and just have it uh, part one is disassembly part two We'll clean it up and put it back together